And now your host, real estate broker, consultant, and best-selling author, Todd Tremonti. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the show, party people. We're glad to have you. We are taking all of your questions. We are talking about the 2023 residential real estate market, whether you are a buyer, seller, or you simply want to enjoy the home that you own or even rent, we are here for you to be an advocate for you to help you enjoy your real estate more. Really right now, it's not even so much about enjoyment as it is about finding clarity in an unbelievably complex and frustrating real estate market. Now, producer Courtney is in studio with a microphone, so y'all just get just buckle up. But we're going we're gonna to run through a bunch of questions that we have uh, today, but you can also send us your questions. Call or text 214-310-0008, 214-310-0008. If you're tuned in live on social media, drop a question or a comment in the comment box. Uh, I know you can't catch all the audio, but you'll catch my part, and I'll answer as many of your questions as I can. But uh, this first segment of the show is always brought to us by Patrick Glaros and his team over at Cardinal Financial, handling all of your residential mortgage needs. You can find them online anytime at patrickglaros.com, G-L-A-R-O-S, and that's NMLS number 308804 or as Ian usually likes to say, NMLS number 308804. Find them online, patrickglaros.com for all your mortgage needs. Okay, here's the situation. We're getting a lot of investment-related questions lately, but that does not necessarily mean we're only talking to investors. There's an element of home ownership, or even renting, to be honest with you, that should put you in at least somewhat of an investment mindset, meaning you're thinking about your home as an investment, a good one or a bad one, a short term or a long term. So we're going to dive right into it today. We're going to answer some questions, but we would love for you to send us more questions and you can send those to 214-310-0008 or you can go online, like my son says, ToddTremontiTeam.com. To ToddTremontiTeam.com. You can click any button, fill out any form, call or text any phone number, whatever is a comfortable communication style for you, and send us your questions or let us know what you're trying to do and how we can help you achieve that. Whether, whether you're buying or selling or not, we are happy to be a resource for you to help create some clarity for you and make life a little bit easier when you're buying, selling, investing, protecting your property value, protesting your property taxes, remodeling, improving, uh, fixing damage, any of those things. 214-310-0008 or online at toddtremontiteam.com. All right, Courtney, what are we dealing with? Well, like you said, we are getting some investment questions. And I think I wanted to start kind of at the top and hear from you about what I should be doing if I want to add real estate to my portfolio in the future. I mean, I want you to speak to the 20 year old who has the dream of owning a home. I want you to speak to the 40 year old who has a home and wants to add this. I, I really want to hear like so much. I know you want me to own my home um, before I add. So I just have I have lots of questions. All right. In the world of YouTube and TikTok and Facebook and Instagram shorts and reels, many of us are used to getting 38 seconds on this topic. And everybody's telling you that one of the primary ways people build wealth is with real estate. And then it's over. Right? So let's unpack that a little bit. I do believe that Grant Cardone and Gary Vaynerchuk and all these content producing media personality people are wrong. Now, I don't I'm not saying they're wrong about everything, but I think they're wrong about home ownership. Uh, and this is where I would um, I would agree with Dave Ramsey and others in that category. And the reason I'm saying those names is because on the spectrum of investing, you would probably put some of those people on the on the side of the spectrum that is like aggressive. And you'd probably put Dave Ramsey on the other side, which is very conservative. And the thing that I think the aggressive investment-minded people miss is the non-financial element of investing. 
And that's what Dave gets better than almost anybody is the peace of mind that comes with it. So I believe real estate does both. I believe owning your home, first and foremost, your first real estate investment should be owning your home. That's where I disagree with people that are saying, no man, rent your place and go buy a cash flowing asset. I believe, uh, you know, we can go Robert Kiyosaki. He would say an asset puts money in your pocket and a liability takes money out and your personal home is not putting money in your pocket. You're having to pay for it, whether it's taxes, insurance, mortgage, or anything. I, I'm not going to fight any of them about those definitions. I'm just going to tell you for the vast majority of us out there, owning your home, having some control, having some benefits, uh, having an asset that may cash flow later, but also, you know, you can lay your head at night. You can change the paint color if you want. There's a lot of peace of mind that comes with that. It's part of the American dream to have some piece of this great place and call it your own. So from a financial perspective, your own home will probably someday be sold or rented to someone else. So we want to think about that from an investment perspective. I wrote a book years ago called Live Free, The Art of the Two-Year Flip. And the whole deal there is if you live there for at least two years and you sell it later, as a single person, you can sell it for up to $250,000 of tax-free profit. As a married person, you can sell it for up to $500,000 of tax-free profit. I don't know of any other investment where you can make that kind of money and not pay any taxes on your gains. So something to think about there. Now, to the 20-year-old person you're talking to me about, Courtney, I would say for most 20-year-olds, goal number one, priority number one is to own your own place. Instead of paying, especially in Dallas-Fort Worth, instead of paying incredibly high rents to pay down somebody else's mortgage, build that equity in your own property, have that control over your own property, and enjoy the benefits of ownership on your own property. Now, that's step one. But let's not just buy anything and do whatever we want with it. Let's enjoy our home, but let's also have a thought process, a strategy, a game plan to go, is this my forever home? If not, what am I doing in it and with it so that when it comes time to sell it, I'm maximizing that opportunity? That's kind of what that book is about. Um, and then to the 40-year-old person that's like, I own my home. I've enjoyed it for quite a while now, but I think I want to own more real estate. I'd like to put my active income into a property to generate passive income or to generate additional gains, whether I'm flipping. So we, we say there's four main ways. There's, there's a thousand ways to invest in real estate, but there's four main ones. Quick flip, which is what you see on TV. Buy it, fix it, sell it. Slow flip, which is what I just said. Buy it, live in it, sell it later for profit. And then there's short-term rental, which most people think of as an Airbnb or a vacation rental or something like that. And then there's long-term rental, which is what most people think of. I own a house. People rent it year to year or two or three years at a time. Four things, quick flip, slow flip, short-term rental, long-term rental. Most people's residential real estate investments are going to belong in those four categories. And honestly, most of them are going to be quick flip and long-term rental. So two majors, two minors, four styles of investing that are going to cover almost everybody. Now, real quick, let's take a pause. And I want to talk to you about uh, DP Lambert at Goosehead Insurance, DP Lam DP dot Lambert at Goosehead.com. The reason I bring that up is because anytime you're thinking about these investment strategies, you know, your insurance is a factor. It's a cost factor, but it also protects you. Uh, and there are others. And we'll talk about those as we get going. But if you're thinking about residential real estate, and you're thinking about insurance, certainly your home or your auto, I want you to reach out to DP Lambert. That's who I use. That's who so, 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 so many of our clients, friends, neighbors, team members use. dp.lambert at goosehead.com. The big company is Goosehead Insurance. The person that we love, trust, and takes really, really, really good care of us and our clients is DP Lambert. You can contact him at dp.lambert at goosehead.com. Insurance is a part of that cost factor. Mortgage is a part of that cost factor. Taxes are part of that cost factor. So you, you want to calculate all that in, but that is a long answer to a short question. But those are the four primary things that people would approach when they're wanting to invest in real estate for the first time. And I would say do that with your own home or the second through a millionth time. And I would say that those four ways are the ways most people are going to do it. And that would the same things would apply to 
single family residential, which generally when we say single family, we really mean one to four family, duplex, threeplex, fourplex. Multifamily, which would be five or more units, could be a six unit apartment complex or a 600 unit apartment complex. Um, and then small commercial, small industrial. Now, when you start getting into really big commercial and really big industrial, I'm not the expert there. You know, I would point you towards some other people. And if you're interested in that, reach out to us and I can, I can introduce you. But that's a broad picture of what the 20 year old investor stereotypically broadly, you know, guessing at a 20 year old investor versus a 40 year old investor. But it is my opinion. And let me say this with emphasis. Everyone should be investing in real estate. Now you should not be doing that yet. If you're just getting your financial feet under you and you're in a ton of debt and things like that, but everyone should be, in my opinion, investing in real estate in some way, if not any other way, than viewing your own home as an investment. Now there's risk to that. You don't need to view it as only an investment. You and your personal needs or your family's needs or your roommate's needs are a higher priority. Safety, security, enjoyment, all those things are a higher priority in my opinion than the financial return on investment in that first primary home. But you can do both. And we've helped hundreds and hundreds of clients over the last 20 plus years do both. We've helped you know, a couple of hundred make five and six figures of tax-free profit in as short as two years. And we've helped thousands of people make wise choices with their home as their first investment. Now, what does that second investment look like? That's where we would offer you a free strategy session. Go to tatramontiteam.com, tatramontiteam.com, sign up for one. And then we would ask you a lot of questions. Are you more inclined to want to, you know, manage renters? Or are you more inclined to want to manage a short-term rapid remodel process? Are you more inclined to want to own a whole lot of units or less units that are higher end? You know, what's our goal? How much, how much passive cash flow do we want? Do we want to do this with no debt? You know, there's a lot of questions that we would ask you to determine what's right for you. But most of them will fall in those four categories. And there's a hundred different reasons you might be feel safer or more excited about one versus the other. Does that answer the question? What it does. How do I know when I'm ready? Okay. I do have an answer to this, but there's going to be a bit of a disclaimer here. The answer is, um, having answered a lot of questions for yourself or for a real estate professional that you can trust that does actually understand all these things uh, and that will put your actual long-term investment benefits ahead of their sales pipeline, meaning them wanting to earn a commission. Um, I tell people, and, and there's people, I'm gonna get emails about this, I know it, but I tell people the worst number of single family rentals to own is one, all right? If it's vacant, you're 100% vacant. If your AC's out, you've probably lost all your profitability for that one year. So I tell people they want to get to four units as fast as humanly possible, or maybe not even consider getting one. Now that doesn't mean you should never have one unit. It just says, if you're, if you don't have a plan beyond one, then a single family residential rental may not be the best uh, investment for you. Some people that's not going to bother them. Most people having tenants, having maintenance issues is not a good thing. I'm just using that as an example of you know you're ready when you've actually thought through these things with someone you trust. When you've thought through not only the financial model, but how it will impact your lifestyle. What are your long-term wealth building goals? And do you have any other goals? Are you investing because you want to create affordable housing opportunities for certain people in certain communities in certain areas? Not everybody's investing purely for a financial return. There might be a lifestyle return or a ministry return or an impact return. Uh, and I celebrate all of those things. There's nothing wrong with investing purely for financial return, but nearly everybody's going to do that differently. So you'll know you're ready when you've gained significant clarity around your options and you've begun to narrow down to the ones that feel most interesting, exciting, likely to help you achieve your goals. And then at its worst, feel most tolerable, right? So we want to create the, uh, our goals towards our dream scenario, but we want to prepare for the worst case scenario. How will this work on its worst day? Can, am I, does that, is that still tolerable to me? 
if I if I'm making three hundred and twenty seven dollars a month on a rental property, and I have a four thousand dollar repair, and so I'm not even profitable this year. Now I have paid down some debt, so I've built some equity, but there's no cash flow this year. Am I still going to be okay with that? If you really, 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 really needed that cash flow, then I would tell you that's probably not a great investment right now. Um, now there's nuance to that, but that's that's the best way I know to answer that question is. You're not just ready because you have the money. You're not just ready because you've decided what type of investment sounds cool to you. You really do need a significant assessment of your tolerance, your financial positioning, uh, your long-term wealth building plan, your long-term impact plan. Is anyone else involved? And you know, what's the likelihood of this you know, succeeding long-term? We will do that for you at no charge whatsoever. No commitment needed. We'll offer you a free strategy session and help you identify what we call your appetite. What are you looking for? What are you hungry for? As well as your tolerances. We call those your non-negotiables. We have a whole process for this. Uh, so we'll offer you a free strategy session around investing in real estate. If you're serious, we don't waste a lot of time with people that are watched an infomercial and have no plan and no idea. But if you're serious and you've got a realistic shot at this, we would gladly spend 45 minutes to an hour and a half with you, helping you answer some of these questions, helping you gain clarity. It might be a month or two before you get all the way to a, you know, a, a, a real decision, but we would love to help you be a part of that pr process. Uh, go to toddtremontiteam.com, click any button, fill out any form, call or text any phone number. We'll gladly set up a time to talk with you by Zoom or in person here in the office, or you can just call or text us right now at 214-310. 0008214310008 You recently told us like where the best places were to buy land in Dallas and we had a question about Frisco and if it's a good short-term rental investment I was kind of curious if you could speak to the best areas that you would target if I was looking for short-term rentals I'll answer the question that was asked and then I'll answer your embedded question. So Frisco is a great area for short-term rentals. <clears throat> the reason is the answer to the second question. Um, as much as some of us would like to believe Dallas is not necessarily on anyone's top 10 list for like destination vacation cities. Now people come here for a lot of things. We know we have tons of awesome things here, but you know, we're not, San Diego or necessarily, you know, New York city, that kind of deal. Um, we got a lot to offer, but the things that people do come here for are sports and entertainment concerts, major work events, um, things like that. So Frisco is a good spot because it is near quite a few of those things. It's got the star up there with the Cowboys. It's got the rough riders. It's got, uh, you know, some star Dallas stars, hockey activity up there. Uh, there are concert venues. It's really close to Plano and legacy West and all those kind of things. Uh, long-term if we're adding theme parks and things up there with the universal studios, I think that's just going to grow and grow and grow. So that's the, that's the Frisco answer. In addition to that, there are people locally, you know, I, I rented a house out for my wife's 40th birthday and they had a girl's weekend and they went out to Rockwall. You know, they just got away and found a house that had enough bedrooms and a pool, right? So there's that, but that's not like a gangbusters industry as much as what is the magnet that's going to pull people in? So that's where in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, we want to be aware of that. Like, would I do one near the stockyards? Because people come to town for a guy's weekend, girl's weekend, go to Billy Bob's, go dance in, you know, go out and do the things that Fort Worth offers. Um, that's more realistic than any old house in any old neighborhood. Now, uh, you know, Fort Worth's a whole nother conversation right now, but that's my answer to the Frisco question and the overall question of where are these things more successful? The opposite, well, not the opposite, but geographically farther out is, is a pretty successful model in DFW lately. You know, there's a house on three or four acres. There's a house on the lake. There's a house on some land and there's some things to do. You can fish, you can water ski, you know, you can ride horses, you can, there's trails for mountain, you know, when you start adding those things that you can do that come with the property, then those are the things that will make that property more profitable, um, increase the occupancy rate and things like that. 
What? Tell me about uh, Keen Landscaping and how they can help me. I'll tell you all about that. I'm going to need you to tell me where we are on the clock in a minute. Uh, Keen Landscaping, K-E-A-N-E, landscaping.com, keenlandscaping.com. Um, they've been out to two of my properties in the last week. First of all, they do the long-term maintenance on all of our stuff. But they also do landscape installs, uh, walkways, pathways, electric, light. I mean, uh, landscape lighting, um, tree work, all of the above. And now is the time, now is the time, now is the time. Don't wait until we're well into spring and early summer when you're wanting to enjoy your outdoor stuff. Get that done now so you can enjoy it all spring and summer. Keenlandscaping.com, K-E-A-N-E, keenlandscaping.com. Ask for Ben and tell him Todd Tremonti sent you. Also, if you don't know what your home would sell for or rent for right now, you're doing it wrong, and you can fix that in less than 60 seconds at valuethishouse.com value this house.com type in your basic information and it will tell you what your house would sell for or rent for right now in the current market and it'll give you all that information in less than one minute value this house.com we have just a few minutes left in this segment and do you have any thoughts on fort worth's new policy that they are allowing short-term rentals in residential I do. I think it's smart of them. I think a lot of people in a lot of neighborhoods don't like it because they don't want their full term lifestyle living neighborhood to be full of bachelor parties and, you know, overnight stupidity. The law already pro prohibits a lot of that stuff. So from a real estate perspective, from a property value perspective, from the vibrancy of the community perspective, I would argue it's mostly positive. There are negatives to almost everything. Uh, but I do think it's going to be good for Fort Worth in some ways. I do think there's also kind of a um, fad of short-term rentals where people think it's easy. People think you buy a house, it doesn't even matter what you pay for it. You just pick a number, people will rent it. Uh, you make a bunch of extra money on the cleaning fees. Haha, <laughs> we're smarter than everybody. It's not that easy. It is not that easy. We're really in the second round of short-term rental investment. The first round five, six years ago did not go well for a lot of people that thought this would be easy. We're sort of in a second round. It's more generally accepted by the communities now, so more people stay in them, so it is a little bit easier. Uh, but again, I think the people that will get hurt by this are the people that assume any house will do or any good deal will be a good short-term rental. I think the people that will do really well are the ones that figure it out. This is near a big draw. There's a lot of people that are looking for places to stay for two, three, four, five nights because they're coming to the stockyards, because they're going to downtown Fort Worth for an event. You know, they're, uh, they're wanting to experience some of the traditionally fun things about Fort Worth, uh, or there's a bunch of corporate events nearby, you know, that kind of things. Uh, those, will, those will probably do pretty darn well. Uh, but your regular old neighborhood Airbnb, there is a whole nother side of this industry that people don't think about. And that's the insurance claim side of it. You know, your kitchen has a massive water damage problem and you're out of your kitchen for three months and your insurance company's like, Hey, here's the amount we'll give you to provide housing. People would rather go have a house for three months than a hotel room. Mm -hmm. And so there are fewer of those, but that's a great business to get in, especially if you can be the recommended property from those insurance claims. We'll be back in the second half of the show talking more about how you can make your home an investment and how you can add that second, third, fourth, fifth, 20th, or 30th investment and build wealth rapidly with tax advantages, cash flow, and capital gains in real estate. Go to toddtremonteteam.com to set up a free strategy session and we'll be right back after the break. Welcome back, party people. Welcome back to the show. We're talking all things DFW residential real estate. So if you've got questions, shoot those to us. ToddTremonteTeam.com. Anywhere on social media, just look up Todd Tremonti and you can call or text 214-310-0008. Uh, before the break, we were talking uh, a lot about residential real estate investing uh, how you can make your home more of an investment. And then we, we really left it hanging a bit on what those next best options are when you want to go beyond your home and begin to build wealth or build 
uh, a retirement plan uh, or a long-term income generation plan from residential real estate. And one of my favorite things to do is to not at all prepare producer Courtney, or as we like to call her full price Courtney around the office, cause she loves to pay full price for things y'all. Um, so I have a question for you that might uh, lead to some answers for all of our friends and neighbors. When you think about investing in real estate beyond your home, what comes to mind? What is scary? What is exciting? What have you heard people say? What do you have questions about? What sounds too good to be true or totally bogus? What, what do you, what's on your mind? I mean, I am very interested in buying um, a rental property, a home in my neighborhood, particularly the house next door to mine. Uh, it is a older home and it feels attainable and accessible. And I just wonder, like, would this be a good Airbnb property that's close to me that I could help manage? Could it be a, a rental property that would provide some income? But listening to you... I am just wondering if if it is like you need to be at a certain level of cash flow in order to make that investment. I have had a rental property before and so I know the expenses that are involved and so I don't I don't know. I Well the the, the interesting thing is it really is a case by case consideration. <clears throat> now, <laughs> let me let me respond to a few things. Number 1, the general rule I give people on a single family rental is I would never buy any single family rental that I didn't feel confident I could generate at least $300 of net positive profit cash flow every single month without fail, regardless of equity growth, meaning regardless of how much the value of the house is going up, because that's funny money. It's just, it's all fake on paper until I capture it. So whether I owned a house and it was worth 250 and it's worth 500 now, that's great. You know, if you want to track your net worth on paper, but as far as the actual asset, I want to evaluate it based on cash flow, and I want it to be at least $300 per door. When I say per door, I mean if it's a duplex, it needs to generate 600 bucks a month. Fourplex, 1,200 bucks a month. After expenses, after a a a, a margin for deferred maintenance, meaning like I'm saving. 10 to 15% per month for when we need to paint it, for when we have to replace the air conditioner, for when the roof needs, roof needs to be replaced, all those kind of things. So the other thing I want to respond, that's just a general ballpark rule for people to use. The other thing I want to respond to is just about the last place on earth I would want to own a long-term rental is next door to my house. Now, that doesn't mean that's true for everyone, and that doesn't mean there aren't some positives. But historically... Not, not historically, logically, if you're going to rent a house out, eventually you're going to have a bad renter. And I do not want them next door to my family and my children and me, right? I never want to be misleading, but I don't, I would not always fully disclose that I was the owner or that I was the manager, right? So there's a whole lot of strategy built into that, how you can legally, ethically, carefully, and wisely create some barriers between you and your tenants. One's a, you know, a management company or full-time manager is obviously one of them, but that's going to eat into that, pro that, that cash flow. But a really great deal has room for a manager. And again, a really great deal um, is on the way to you having four or more. Now, there is a dip, there are caveats to that. If you're someone who has a passion for hosting and things like that, and you have sort of a bed and breakfast. By the way, do you know what Airbnb stands for? Tell me. Air bed and breakfast. In the early, early days. It was people coming into your home, right? It was like you can sleep on an air bed on my floor and for like 50 bucks because you need to be nearby. Now, over the years, that's obviously evolved into a whole nother economy, right? Just like we used to say we would never jump in a stranger's car. Now we do it all the time. We would never just randomly sleep in someone's living room, but now we do it all the time. So that's my point. It's not bed and breakfast, like charming little bed and breakfast on the countryside. But if that's your angle, or if that's why you did the next door thing, because you're like, I just love to host people and love on them and invest in them and make them muffins for breakfast and all that. That's one thing, but that's still right next door to where you live. So that's something I would think of. I, that would rarely be a, something I would recommend. But I'm not saying never. 
because there are certain people that that's awesome, especially if you had a unique property where you had a second home on it or whatever. But um, I'm not going to tell people where you live, but um, for most people in your neighborhood, that wouldn't be wise. I'm not saying it wouldn't be for you because I know some of your giftedness and some of the things you love, but for our audience, for people that are tuning in, some of these things can be romanticized and may not be wise. Some of these things you might not think would be wise, but I could, I could paint a glorious picture of how it could be wonderful for you. And that's where the answer to this question is just always case by case. So nuanced. I yeah. know, because it would be so cool. Listeners, I have a little travel business that I like to tell people where to go and what to do in cities. And I feel like it would be a really fun spinoff component to have it would be. an Airbnb. It just wouldn't be great when the angry, annoying, bitter person was pounding on your door at 2 a.m. because the toilet was overflowing. It's so fair. And I'm not, I'm not the guy that dumps the negative worst case scenario on everything. But the point is with a short term rental, if you're, let's just say you were like amazingly successful and that thing was full almost all the time and the average person stayed for two nights. So you're going to have like a hundred and something people stay there. There's going to be some bad ones. Yeah. There's going to be some disasters. Um, and I just don't want that near my family. Now that doesn't mean you don't do it. Maybe you just add some other protections. Mm -hmm. But my point is these things are so nuanced. It's so case by case, but every infomercial, every buy my program, buy my coaching program, or your friend that you've watched doing it for 20 years. And you're like, you know, Mr. Johnson's done this forever. I just want to follow the way he did it. It's never that simple, which is why if you're thinking about adding real estate investment as part of your wealth building, as part of your lifestyle, as part of your retirement, as part of your income generation, you need to think strategically about it with somebody you trust that's been there before. And we're offering you a free strategy session to do that. Go to TatramaniTeam.com, click any button, fill out any form, call or text any phone number, and you we, we can set you up with a free strategy session. 30 to 90 minutes by Zoom or in the office. We'll answer your questions. We'll give you clarity about where are the unique opportunities in the current market based on the economy and what's happening in the market. Uh, we can also just help you as a single person, couple, family, partnership, whatever, think through which version of this would be best for you. When, where, how, at what price, how do you finance it? How do you invest your cash? We can help you with all of those things. Do not wing it. When, when the thing that's supposed to be a blessing becomes a burden and you can't get out of it, don't put yourself in that situation. Let's slow down. Before we speed up, have a conversation that costs you nothing and maybe we can, maybe we can help you build wealth, build cash flow, build that life you really want to build and use real estate to do it. Now, Patrick Gleros always kicks us off, always sponsors that first segment in every session uh, in every segment. And once again, they've done that. Patrick Gleros mortgage team over at Cardinal Financial. He's the only person I have ever in 20 plus years of real estate brokerage, sales, investing, only person I've ever used for a personal mortgage. 972-728-3420 or online at patrickglaros.com. G-L-A-R-O-S. I trust him. You can trust him. His team is awesome. Patrickglaros.com for all of your mortgage needs. Please do not, please, please do not fall into the trap of one of these bait and switch mortgage companies online that's offering you a rate that you'll never actually get. It's asking you to opt in online in one of their army of salespeople that gets paid very little per loan that needs to do millions of loans to make, not millions, but hundreds of loans to make any good money. Call a local lender who really cares for you, who will educate you through the process, who will recommend that you go elsewhere in the scenario where they can't be your best solution. That's really rare. But start that process online at patrickglaros.com. G-L-A-R-O-S, Patrick. Glaros.com. Also, real fast, I want to tell you about home serve home warranty. And the reason for that is I would never own an investment property that I didn't put a home warranty on. Home serve home warranty is great on your personal home, especially those first couple of years in the home, but definitely on a rental property, short term or long term. I would rather just call home serve and say, hey, something got messed up, send somebody out than me constantly be tracking down different vendors and figuring out who's priced right and who's honest. HomeServe will handle all that for you. They are like 
If something's not right, call them. They handle it. You pay a small trip fee, and that policy covers you for the whole year. So go to home, uh, sorry, homeserve.com. That's homeserve.com. And Christine, our friend over there, will take good care of you. What you got, producer Courtney? Okay, so we're two months into the year. We've got Officially. two months under our belt. How has this market looked different? How do you feel like the year has started off? How do you think things are going? Let me tell you, my friend, the word I would choose for it is annoying. I saw on the news last night, I almost filmed it for you. It said home sales are up. What do they you are. mean annoying? It's annoying because of the mixed messages and the mixed emotions. Like the real market right now is really solid the actual real estate market. What's selling, what's on the market, how are prices, how are people responding? Solid. The psychological market, what's happening in between people's ears, buyers, sellers, realtors, lenders, is a mess. I'm talking hot mess, dumpster fire. Because people are imposing their self-fulfilling prophecies, their opinions, their bad information on the market. And so, Let's just say the Todd Tremonti home selling team puts a house on the market, which we do like multiple times a week. We'll have one buyer one day that's like, is it still available? And the next day someone's like, yeah, well, you know, I'll let you know next Thursday. You're like, how are these two people operating on the same house, on the same street, on the same day? And it's because of bad information, bad agents, bad instincts, you know, all those things. And I'm not angry at any one of those people. I'm just saying it's a mess. The information is all over the place. The emotions are all over the place. The, the approaches to the real estate business are all over the place. Now, let me whisper this because we don't want to lose our advantage here. Our clients, our friends, our listeners are able to take advantage of this market on both ends. Sell high, buy low. We want to sell to, and not, not that we want to harm anybody, but we want to sell to one of those buyers that understands still a very good, strong seller's market. And I know I'm going to have to pay a good price and I know I don't have time to goof around and I know it might still be competitive. As a seller, we want to sell to one of those buyers. As a buyer, we want to buy from one of these lower confidence sellers that's like, well, uh, time's come and gone. I've missed my opportunity. Let me lower my price and we'll do all the repairs and we'll be really, really flexible with them. And because of the complexity and uncertainty and wide spectrum of thoughts and feelings and opinions about the market, we can do that for our clients left and right right now. It might take a little bit longer than it was, but our team, the Tatramani Home Selling Team, is still guaranteeing to sell your home over the average price and under the average time. And we are still guaranteeing to save you at least $5,000 throughout the buying process. Right now, it's usually a lot more than that. But you can win on both sides if you're buying and selling right now. If you're just buying, you can win. You have a better chance to buy well now than you have in the last five to seven years. If you're selling right now, you need to be more strategic than you've been the last five to seven years, but you can still break all-time records, period. End of statement. It's a great time to be in a good, logical market. Don't buy all the hype. Find someone you can trust. If you're shopping around, or if you already know you're ready to go, just call 214-310-0008 or go to ToddTremontyTeam.com and just say, hey, I'm ready to talk to someone. I'm ready to sit down with a pro and put together a game plan, and we'll get that done for you. So how do you see things going leading into the summer? More of the same, but I do think there, there are more and more people realizing there is reason for optimism. Like, there was a lot of calls late 22, early 23, like the market's going to crash. It's going to be this horrible recession. Home values are going to tank. And I think certainly here in DFW, every day, you know, a few more people, a few more people are realizing it's just not happening. Uh, I think it's still a good place to own a home. I think I'd still rather own that house than pay these crazy high rents. Those rates aren't exactly where I want them, but they're still pretty decent. Um, homes are selling. You know, there's multiple offers on some of them. Like, I think I need to get in the game because I don't, I don't see, I don't see the opportunity getting any better. So as more and more people come around to that, I think we will see a fairly active, we're already seeing the spring market pick up. So I think we'll see a fairly active spring. 
I think we'll see a really active early summer. Now, after that, I'm not so sure. I don't think values are going to tank, but I think the activity might taper back off. But if I'm a seller, I want to sell now. If I'm selling my house in 2023, I'd like to get that done in the next four to five months. You know, I'd like to get that done between March and late July. If I'm a buyer, I'd like to get that done right now because I have more choices. I have a good amount of inventory. It's not massive inventory, but it's better than I've seen for a while. And I'm on the front end of those sellers gaining confidence. So I'd like to buy right now while those sellers aren't still aren't really, really certain yet. Whereas by mid to late summer, I think sellers might be a little tougher to deal with. We talk a lot about like that group think that happens mm -hmm. in this buying and selling market. What are you seeing any, what trends are you seeing in Dallas? Yeah. Now I don't want to contradict what I already said, because what we're seeing right now is a hundred buyers, a hundred opinions, of, and they think they're in a hundred different markets. Now those are starting to form into maybe 20 groups of five, you know, five different groups with 20 different opinion, you know, whatever the math is on that five different groups, 20 per group, five different main strategies or approaches to the market. But the point I'm making is slowly people are starting to regain some sense of this market where there's been no real confidence in the market since February of last year. It's been about a year, February, March last year, when rates started to go up significantly, it's just been kind of a mess. It's slowly, slowly, slowly becoming less of a mess. I mean, we've been shouting every Saturday on the radio show and all day, every day to our clients, our friends, our neighbors and prospects, and they've been getting the best of both worlds while the rest of the market is just kind of whining about things. But I do think as the market picks up, you said, you know, you saw statistics that the market is picking up. It is. I think that that momentum will continue to build and people will start to formulate some more common opinions and beliefs about the market, which is why I think we'll see a good spring and a great early summer, then there may be some uncertainty after that. But I do think people are starting to realize the sky is not falling. That doesn't mean there might not be more uncertainty ahead this year, but I believe it is a, it's the best time to buy in, a, in years. That doesn't mean it's like the best time to buy in history. We all would have liked to buy in 1858 when you could buy houses for $1,100. But, you know, that ain't coming back. And I think not 100 years from now, but 10 years from now, people are going to say, shoot, I didn't think it was a great time because of rates, but I wish I would have bought every house I could get my hands on. I believe that will be true. But I also believe that in the short term, sellers in November might really wish they had sold in May or June because we might be back to less certainty and buyers holding back a little bit and slightly less inventory. I don't think it's going to be bad at all, but the advantage for sellers is now because there is still buyer interest um, and prices are still going up. The advantage to buyers is you have more choices and you still have some lower confidence sellers. I'm not saying it's the best time ever for both. It would have been a little bit better to sell hype wise six months ago or a year ago, but value wise, they're still going up. So does that make sense? I don't want people to think I'm talking in circles. I'm just trying to give both sides. The negative to being a buyer right now is rates, but almost everything else is positive. The negative to being a seller right now is we have fewer buyers in the market, but the positive is prices are still going up. So that's the clear picture of what's happening. And because of that, I think we'll have more certainty for the next four or five months. And then we might lose some of that certainty going into the fall and winter. We always do, by the way, but... That, that's where we are. And I think that's where we're headed for the next five to seven months, probably the next year. Are you seeing homes on land be much more in demand? Um, so yes, but no. And what I mean by that is there's less demand across the whole board, right? Rates have just caused some buyers to be like, well, I don't need to move, so I'm not going to move. Mm -hmm. But of the activity that is still here, yes, we are seeing more and more people that are like, I'd like to get out of town and get an acre and a half, or I'd like to get a 4,000 square foot house, but I want yard also. So I want a half acre, right? So yes, more and more people are wanting land of the people that are out actively buying and selling. Hey, PMR roofing um, is who we trust for roofs. And as we come out of uh, winter and we head into hail season, otherwise known as spring and early summer, 
you need to know what you're dealing with now uh, and you need to know who you would call if something happened. I would go to pmrroofing.com or I would call my buddy Jordan at PMR Roofing at 214-957-0839. You don't have to memorize that. You can just go to tatramaniteam.com and click on the radio tab or you can remember pmrroofing.com. I read an article the other day that the total number of real estate agents in the country has gone down 2%. Uh, it went down 2% in January. Ironically, that's a lot of people because it was like 1.5 million people. So that's, you know, hundreds of thousands of people uh, or in the range. Uh, that will happen. That will continue to happen, I believe, through May or June, if not all year long. But hear me say this. If you've always dreamed about getting into real estate because you love people and you love homes and you're willing to work hard and you'd like to make this a career, I want you to go to TatramaniTeam.com or I want you to text me right now at 214-310-0008. Just let us know by text that you're thinking about getting into the business and we can see if you would be a fit for our Richardson office or our Fort Worth office where our agents sell between four and 10 times the Texas average for realtor production. If you'd like to sell four to 10 times as many homes and make probably somewhere in the ballpark of 17 times the income of the average agent in Texas, then we'd love to chat with you about that. We're looking for about four people between our Richardson and Fort Worth offices. You can go to touchmoneyteam.com. If you really want to go straight to the application, just go to tthst.info. TTHST is short for Todd Tremonti Home Selling Team. TTHST.info. There's a process there. Watch some videos, fill out an assessment, send it over, and then we'll find a time to chat. We would love to find four more competitive, tenacious, kind, loving, servant-hearted, competitive winners to come have a ton of fun with us, have a bunch of impact with us, and also make a great living with us. Our goal is to build businesses that would support the lives we want to live, lives of impact and purpose and meaning and joy. Go to tthst.info for that. For everything else, just go to TodTremontiTeam.com or like my son says, TodTremontiTeam.com. 